Enough! That is Michael Myers! Bullshit! So the last time I talked about Halloween on this channel was re-watching Halloween Kills, which I don't like. I still really dislike the film. I didn't hate it as much as I did the first time, but I still think it's pretty bad. And before that, I watched Halloween 5 again, and I think we're all in agreement. That movie is a load of old ass. Obviously there are two versions of Halloween 6. There's the producer's cut, which believe it or not is beloved. And there's the theatrical cut, which is the cut that I like. Uh, I don't understand this weird... I mean, it's getting more love in recent years, the theatrical cut of Halloween 6. I don't understand the love for the producer's cut. I see that there's the ambition of the cult fawn storyline, but that's in the theatrical cut, and it's handled better in that. I think the producer's cut is just so batshit insane, it becomes not a Halloween film. Now, I kind of discovered an appreciation for Halloween 6 when I was watching this with someone new, because I've been watching through the franchise with someone new, and when you watch it with someone who doesn't have knowledge of Halloween, you start to ask the questions, you start to realise how strange this series is to someone from the outside. It's really weird how we get no explanation for Michael being the way he is, it's really weird how he is in, indestructible but we don't say he is, and it's all this weird shite, keep constantly coming back, and you just get people going, this doesn't make any sense. And it's like, well yeah, outside of horror fanatical fans, this probably seems like a bloody weird franchise. And even though we realise it gets weirder and weirder, for people coming into it new, it gets weirder way before Halloween 6. They, you know, they're, they're asking questions about Halloween 2. Because if you think about it, Halloween 5 is the offender. Halloween 5 takes us down a terrible route because Halloween 5 doesn't even set us up for Halloween 6. Halloween 5 sets us up for, I don't even know what they were doing. I don't know what they were setting up for. It's like the worst elements of Friday the 13th, Hellraiser, Children of the Corn, like the worst horror elements ever are thrown into Halloween 5. Michael looking like a tit. Everything about it is just madcap, annoying, boring nonsense. You're just like me. Halloween 6, they actually went, right, that doesn't make sense, but it's saying there's something, it's saying it's going to lead to something, let's go somewhere with it. So to all the people who are like, oh, hey, Halloween 6, it introduces the cult, it does this and that, well, yeah, only because Halloween 5 set it up. So Halloween 5 deserves more of the hatred, in my opinion, than Halloween 6. Halloween 6 is at least trying. Halloween 5 is just like, it, does, it doesn't even have the guts to do what Halloween 6 does and actually go all the way with its ideas. It doesn't, it just injects them out of his it just pulls it out of his ass whereas Halloween 6 actually has the guts to go all the way with it and that's what I like about this it's a really interesting entry because it's not like any other Halloween movie and I'll go as far as say Halloween 6 is nothing like any other slasher movie ever made really it's a very unique film it has a lot of ambition that doesn't always pay off but you know what I, I, I tip my hat for them for, for trying Halloween 6 the theatrical hits that sweet spot Whereas the producer's cut, I, I like the ideas, but the delivery is so forced and so in your face and it becomes about the cult, whereas this is still about Michael Myers and Michael Myers is still scary. You know, Halloween 6, the theatrical cut, achieves something which hasn't been since the, f the first Halloween, really, or Halloween 4, I guess, where Michael's actually scary again. He's actually pretty darn scary in this. Halloween 6 the theatrical cut actually has a smart way of doing things. It never actually inherently says on the screen Michael is controlled by this cult. That's never said in the film. At the very most it's said that they're trying to control him. Michael and Jamie vanished. Many people believe them dead but I think that someone hid them away. Someone who keeps Michael, protects him, tries to control him. And if there's one thing I know, you can control evil. Halloween 6 the producer's cut is just, no, no, they're controlling it. Like this, you know, this is why I get frustrated with people who like Halloween 6, the producer's cut, because it's like, 
there's nothing, there's nowhere to go now. You kind of stripped Michael of any mystery or menace. Halloween 6 managed to actually do some explanation, bring some characters in and keep you guessing and keep Michael mysterious and inject some story. You know, this is why I respect the way they handled the theatrical cut. You don't hear, you don't know that Michael Myers is the father of Jamie's baby because he is, of course, the deadbeat dad to Jamie's bloody baby. In Halloween 6, the producer's cut, it's completely said. It's just, there's not any getting around it. Michael is the deadbeat dad. You know whose baby it is, don't you? Michael! The baby is yours, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it, Michael? Whereas the theatrical cut, yes, Jamie has a baby, but it's never said that Michael is the dad. So you can kind of convince yourself he's not, even though you know in the producer's, producer's cut he is. Even in the theatrical cut, you have moments where Michael actually attacks this cult and goes crazy on this cult to show that he's not actually controlled by them. So I kind of like the, the idea that, that Halloween 6 is kind of, that these people try and control Michael and they're kind of in the shadows thinking they can. I like that idea. You know, I like the idea of a bunch of evil people in Haddonfield thinking they can harness and control Michael because it still keeps Michael as who he is, but it injects something in there. But there are moments where this genuinely does have that Halloween atmosphere. And there are moments where this is a very visceral, creepy horror film. It's kind of like the first Halloween, kind of a in your face, vicious version of that first film. There's many good shots. I think Joe Chappelle's a good director here. Many good shots of Michael. I feel like the mask is the very best since the original mask. It actually looks scary. It's actually a good mask. I don't know why you didn't just keep this mask and went, you know, while they went with 9,000 masks at once in having H2O, this is a fine mask. It's pretty scary. George Wilbur, the actor from Halloween 4, is back as Michael in Halloween 6, and I think he delivers well. He's very, very well shot in this and very monstrous. And I feel like Joe Chappelle returns to realizing that Michael is best presented as very unstoppable. There's always this ticking time bomb when Michael's on screen in Halloween 6. He's always coming, 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 or he's just kind of looming and, and staring, watching. And that's what Michael should be. And there's a real pace to Halloween 6. It's kind of, as I say, that first film with an injection in it. And I respect that. You know, lots of people call this. I've compared this film to kind of a music video in the way of its editing. It's kind of scattered editing and crazy editing. Yes, there's an element to that, but I still found it exciting. I still found it entertaining. It's way more entertaining than the bland and rubbish Halloween vibe. I think Paul Rudd does a way better job than Anthony Michael Hall did in Halloween Kills as Tommy. I feel like this character is way more fascinating than that Tommy. That Tommy is just an old mad bastard who gets on the stage. I was like, I was babysat once at the age of four, or however old he was, by this girl down the street. She lives up there. She hasn't left either. And now I think about that night for the rest of my life. Never made an effort to leave, nor have you lot. You all stayed here, and you're all obsessed with that night too. And that guy. We never got over it. Evil dies tonight! Whereas Paul Rudd's character of, of Tommy, you can see how he's grown up obsessed with Michael because Michael kept coming back, so there's reason for him to, like, to get obsessed, for to not be able to move on from that night. And I like how his room is a Michael Myers shrine. I like how he is haunted. I like how he's kind of obsessed, but also has this strange admiration for Michael. I like the fact that he phones in a radio station late night Reminds me of that kind of urban legend, kind of, um, you know, Michael's almost presented as an urban legend in Haddonfield with crazy theories by the residents of Haddonfield and that scene where people are phoning in to the radio station is pretty funny. But I was one of the lucky ones. I survived. There is help out there for people like you. It's called electroshock therapy. Come on, you don't really believe that Michael Myers is actually alive. Michael's work isn't done in Haddonfield, and soon, very soon, he'll come home to kill again. But this time I'll be ready. I really like the scene where Tommy sees Michael again for the first time since he was a kid. I actually think it's an ingenious scene, an ingenious acting choice by Paul Rudd. I think that's just, he says everything in his face. like. 
he's like almost happy to see him but terrified and horrified and it's the trauma that Michael put him through. It's just little moments in this film which people I think are overlooking. I feel like a lot of people haven't watched Halloween 6 for years and just remember it as the weird one. But it is, and it is the weird one, but it's the weird one that tries to make those weird things work. It actually is trying new things. It has to try new things because Halloween 5 gave it no choice. Remember that. And it actually tries to put in, you know, some life back in this franchise and be a bit more creative. It doesn't always work. It doesn't always pull off. But dear God, I think Halloween 6 is trying. I do really wish they could have included Jamie in this. Obviously, Daniel Harris as Jamie made a huge impact in Halloween 4 and 5 as young Jamie Lloyd. In this one, Jamie's played by JC Brandy and offensively she's killed off in the first few minutes just as Rachel was in Halloween 5. I don't know why they do that. I don't know why. You might as well put a scroll on the screen saying we hate Halloween fans. Like there's no justification for that and in the producer's cut it's an even worse death. At least in the theatrical he gets she gets killed by Michael Producer's cut, she gets assassinated by some git from Lethal Weapon. Like seriously, it's the villain from Lethal Weapon shoots her in a hospital bed. What are you doing to Jamie? The work is done now, Jamie. Oh, come on! Jamie should have been in this film. I actually think if Jamie was in this, it was the same sort of film and she was doing uh, Marion Hagen's character. Marion Hagen plays Laurie Strode's sister in this. Uh, and there's the Strode family again. If Jamie was taking that place, this would be one of the really, really great Halloween sequel. I, I really think if you'd have got Daniel Harris in there, have her, because she, she built such a likeable character and to see her now as an adult fighting Michael gave it that different feel and to team up with Tommy to meet another child who was traumatized by Myers. That's a story right there, and they chose to just not do it. And when we get to the ending, it's not very good in both versions. But, you know, again, I, I think it's indisputably better in the theatrical car. I don't understand. Like, the producer's car... Just, just look. Just watch this. <laughs> Tommy, where is he? It worked. Power of the runes stopped him. Right. Power of the runes stopped him. Like, well, so all along, all we had to do was just all we tried to do was pick up a stone from the backyard when Michael's in there, and just go. But then, how do we take the theatrical cut? We have Paul Rudd beat the shit out of Michael with a lead pipe. Now. That's a really cool scene. It's at least uh, Tommy gets to do something to Michael that is effective in Halloween 6, whereas Halloween Kills just gets killed. At least he gets his moment here. Um, I, like, I always remember that scene where he's beating him up with the you know, where he plays that trick on him with the baby and then he's beating him up with the lead pipe and then he injects him with the, uh, uh, the syringes and he beats him up with the lead pipe. I always remember that scene. I think it's a memorable ending, I really do, and I just love how Paul Rudd puts on this smug face as if, yeah, I've killed Michael, yeah, of course you have, mate. I almost felt we should swap films when people were like, oh, the theatrical cut ending's so bad, I'm like, have you seen the one you advocate for? It's like a strange dream fan fiction. There are lots of passionate fans of the producer's cut of Anime 6, so I respect their opinion, I understand if you genuinely think it's better than the theatrical cut. This is just my opinion. I'm aware that the theatrical cut of Halloween 6 isn't a work of art either. So I'm not saying this is a fantastic Halloween movie, but I feel like it's underrated. It had a lot of potential, some good ideas, some creative kills, good Michael Myers, good performance by Paul Rudd, some scary moments genuinely brought back the fear, which I thought was impossible to do after Halloween 5. 
And it's just kept me on my toes. It always has this film. Even when I hate it, I enjoy watching it. What do you guys think of Halloween 6? Do you prefer the producer's cut? Or do you prefer the theatrical cut like me? Do you think it's the most underrated Halloween movie like me? A subscribe if you like Halloween. I have many Halloween videos on the channel. Click on another one on the screen now. Also talk about other movie geek content all the time. Subscribe, you know you want to. I will see you guys in the next video.